Hello everybody, this is Gregory with Permanent Weight Loss Made Easy, where there should be no hesitance in your weight loss and in your weight maintenance. Today we're going to talk about the consortium, the agenda, the lifetime system of manipulation that gets us to be fat and how we can combat it. Now before we begin, if you need help with weight loss, contact me through the Clarity FM link found here in the episode notes. Guys, I lost over 100 pounds, I've kept it off for 30 plus years, I can help you with it too if you like. All right, so I think it's kind of like this. Trauma leads us to have a disordered relationship with food, which then in turn us to have obesity. So what are some traumas that can happen to us in childhood? Divorce. We know that the highest rate of divorces were in the 70s and 80s when they ushered in no-fault divorce. So before that, you had to have a legitimate reason to divorce somebody. And in, during that time, let's say in the 50s and 60s, it was mostly men who initiated divorce so they could remarry uh, a younger woman. So the, the woman who wasn't working as kind of a, a compensation would get the children an alimony. But when no-fault divorce was ushered in the 70s, it flipped. And the women were the ones initiating divorce. So in the 70s and 80s was peak divorce. Many of you were born and raised during that time. So divorce can certainly do it. As a child, that can bring a lot of trauma. Uh, you look at, of course, physical abuse, you can look at sexual abuse, you can look at lack of nurturance, all these things, neglect. And so all these things make us damaged. They throw off our normal psychosexual development, they throw off our normal development. Think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And so when we are needing nurturance, we'll turn to things that uh, maybe aren't going to be healthy for us in the long run, like food or if it's later in your life, maybe it's alcohol. It's things to numb the pain, so to speak. And so that's where we develop these bad eating habits. I've mentioned it many times. You, you see a regular three-year-old kid, they're just like, I'm hungry. They eat and then they walk away when they're no longer hungry. They don't walk away when they're full to the brim. Right? So that development is learned. Or you look at a dog, the dog at your house. And he just eats hungry, walks away. And then later on, you look at, okay, so now we're obese, and then we worsen that by big food. Big food worsens it. We have that long 10-part series on the middle aisles at the grocery store, all those UPFs, the ultra-processed foods. All those foods that are just high in sugar, high in flour, low in nutrition, high in food dyes, high in preservatives. It's just junk. I mean, by its definition, you can't even call these foods because food is something that's supposed to... to help the body, cultivate the body, grow the body. And these foods like fruity pebbles don't do it. They don't do it. So then we, we start eating these foods, but we already have a default mechanism to overindulge in them because of the trauma. And these foods don't help. Now look, there were kids in the 60s and 70s they ate fruity pebbles all the time and they didn't get fat, right? But they had an ordered relationship with food, many of them. But if you have a disordered relationship with food, then you're gonna be eating a lot of it. I used to go to Golden Corral, the buffet place, and I would see there the multi-generations of obesity, the fat parents and these poor kids, seven, nine years old, 11, already super over overweight. Where'd they learn that from, right? From the parents, right? It's, it's, it's an ultra form of neglect. But big food doesn't care about our health. They're putting food porn advertisements out there to encourage kids to buy food porn has something to do with pornography it's just I mean, the word pornography has to do with with eliciting an effect so really when you think of porn that people watch that's sexual pornography but food pornography are those pizza hut commercials or those dairy queen commercials that had they show the pizza and they're lifting up the pizza it's all gooey and stretchy the taco bell commercials all these right they're done to elicit a response for you to be like oh that looks good i'm gonna go get it they use advertising to manipulate us. Advertising in its, in its core is about manipulating. Then they put these foods out that are just junk. I mean, we're not even talking about our milk being shot up with recombinant bovine growth hormone or our meats being shot up with stuff or our fish being fed antibiotics and all the antibiotics of food and just all these things. We're just talking about the majority of foods at a grocery store are not good for us. And then they put the milk and they put the vegetables and they put the meat many times in different sides of the grocery aisle because they want you to walk through, right? They are manipulating. So then you, you have this whole life of eating junk food. So is it really surprising that big pharma is going to walk in when you start having diseases? 
because what's a disease, right? It's, it's, a th it's your homeostasis, it's your body's natural balance being thrown off. And is it surprising that it is being thrown off if most of our life we are eating foods that are low in nutrition, that we're gonna end up having some mineral or vitamin deficiency? No. Or that we're gonna end up obese, which leads to metabolic syndrome, so all the high cholesterol, hypertension, arthritis, all these things are connected to obesity? No. And then big pharma's like, yeah, we'll help you as they twist their mustache. We'll help you. So they're like, oh, you got a little high cholesterol? We'll put you on Diavan for 45 years instead of thinking of maybe, I don't know, holistic naturopathic ways to resolve high blood pressure. They don't care. So big pharma sweeps in, gives you these drugs, and they want you to take them forever because there's no profit from dead people and from people who are healthy. So then big pharma gets you in there. And now you're, you're getting... Big food is manipulating you, big pharma is manipulating you, and at the end of your life, it's gonna be big medicine and big hospital that nickel and dimes you until you're dead. So what's the good news? The good news is that you are aware of this just by watching this YouTube channel, and there's so many podcasts uh, on this kind of stuff out there about the toxins in our food and, and whatnot. We've had this proliferation of this information. I, knowledge is power, right? So the good thing is, what's the first step? Well, I think you can do all these steps at one time. So one is, Break that disordered relationship that you have with food that was likely caused by childhood trauma. Work on that therapy and whatnot. We have tons of videos here on that. But then also, <clears throat> understand that you're being manipulated. Understand that 90% of our food's polluted. And yes, if you can't afford it, go to Whole Paycheck or buy organic. Uh, we have videos here like which which you really have to buy organic. There's pesticides in, in the produce. Certain pesticides, I'm sorry, certain produce you do need to buy organic. Many you don't. So even the, the eat clean organic movement is trying to manipulate you too. But be aware that the biggest culprit are those middle aisle grocery stores. Be aware that we all know intuitively how we're supposed to eat to be healthy. But you think about it now. We've spent the most money on healthcare, trillions ever in American history. Gym memberships are out there all time high, but we're the fattest we've ever been. And you've seen this trend. The more money we put in healthcare, the fatter we are. Is that the surprising? So the large majority of people are gonna keep going up that road of being obese and not doing the deep work, but you are here, so you can fix it. So one is be aware that you're being manipulated. Two, change your diet. It's the number one video we did here, day one. How do you have to change your paradigm of how you view food and exercise and sleep and stress? So change your diet. If it, God didn't make it, don't eat it, with, with some exceptions or things that are mildly processed, like dark chocolate. And then get rid of the liquid calories, get rid of the alcohol, get rid of the sodas and the sweet teas, drink you know, the most healthy beverage ever in the world, tea, regular tea. Exercise, get good sleep, and the number one thing is break that disordered relationship with food, because if you can do the other things, but then you can go to Whole Foods and buy organic Cheetos and, and eat five bags of that. How is that gonna really help you? So. The key is to get off the binge eating, the disordered relationship with food and alcohol. That's the number one thing. But also just be aware that you're being manipulated by all these industries. Big food gets you sick so then big pharma can sweep in and the big hospital and big hospice can come at the end of your life. Guys, post in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray.